I think it goes to the heart of what I'm always trying to understand why I write. Um, so uh, how can I explain this? I think there's two things. Even toes in my nose at some level is educational because you're teaching children to love language by having them own their own voices, by having them have faith in their own voice. So at some level, even though it doesn't appear to be, I would argue that Toes in My Nose is an educational book in terms of it helps teach children to love language and have faith in their own voices. Okay, the more intentional ones, like if you could wear my sneakers, UNICEF came to me. This is a book about children's rights. Can you do in a way that we can have fun to help us link to children's rights? Well, I said no to them four times before I said yes to them. I said no to them four times. And I said, no, I'm not the person you want. You want a nonfiction writer. You want a, what I do is nonsense. This is like contriving nonsense. I don't think I can do it. And then truthfully, what happened is a little elephant walked right into my office and said, did you hear the elephants trumpeting last night? They thundered past my window. The earth rumbled back and forth. They were going to fight a battle, thunka lumping off to war. And, the little, and that's the only poem in all the 20, 30 some years I've been writing that ever came full blown and I hardly changed a word ever It's the only one and I and when I was finished the elephant poem I went maybe I could use animals to do a book about children's rights and then I went that's that's nonsense and I went ah, that's what I do <laughs> and I went okay so I wrote them back and I went you know what I've reconsidered I will do this for you we can the little I want the poems to be able to stand on their own and then at the end you can do something about you know what you need to do I made that decision at a time, up until then I hadn't done anything educational, and I knew, and because I don't like didactic books, I don't like the word, I, I, the last thing I want to do is hammerhead a kid and say, be kind, read this poem, do this, and, no, I don't believe in that, right, so, and actually, I know there is a whole other body of thinking that says, well, that, that kind of literature has its place, not for me, right, I, I mean, I went through the, you know, I'm an English literature student, I studied children's literature, I know that that's not what I want to do, that's not what I want to create, so making the decision to do that book for UNICEF was really scary, and I got slammed from some people, oh, now you're doing a do-good book, well, you know what I find really funny is that was the one, of, like, that was a long time ago, a uh, book about the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, now there's all kinds of books about children's rights, but that was early days, and I used nonsense poetry, and I'm really glad I did it, and yet I know that some people were like, ooh, now you're trying to teach the kids things. And I thought, well, I've always tried to, you know, I mean, if, if they learn to love words, that's still, that's a part of me. And it was Joyce, I have to say this on tape, it was Joyce Barkhouse who allowed me, the, gave me the permission to travel in the direction that I needed to go in, in terms of like, don't be ashamed of that, don't apologize for that. You know why you did that, Sherry. You do think children's rights are really important. You were asked to write a book about that. You wanted to use your words. And Joyce came to me and she said, Sherry, doing that book for UNICEF was a very, very good thing. Don't ever let anybody tell you that it wasn't. And it was from Joyce. And I was like, Joyce, thank you. She was, Joyce was an incredibly kind, kind, kind missionary woman. She's very generous to other writers. Joyce Barkhouse, just, she was. And so Joyce saying that at that time, and then, you know, come to find out, you know, Joyce started out writing Sunday school, you know, poems. So did Catherine Parr Trail back in the day, you know. So all of us who write probably have that instructional, educational, you know, social justice part of us. And for me, that was probably the most that I ever did it like that connected. After that, though, it gave myself permission. You know, I really care about children with autism. I really care about, I mean, Pocket Rocks. I mean, I was thinking about Kelly today. I wondered if she knew the book Pocket Rocks. But it's about, a t you know, a teacher's assistant who helps a child who learns kinesthetically to write his name with rocks. And, of course, I, I come from, you know, working in schools with kids who fall in love with language even though it's difficult for them. I had... And I'm allowed to say this, you know, two sons who, 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 like I said, they were both premature and they both were diagnosed with learning variations, you know, really early on. And they both really struggled within the school system. So as a mother, you know, I'm right, you know, they're not in my books that way, but, but those issues, you know, how does a child learn? How do our brains work? All that stuff. So writing pocket rocks just seemed like a natural thing at that time to write. And, and it actually was a little boy that I met in a school named Ian. Ian, His last name was an Ian Gooby. 
who did write his name upside down and backwards, using Jake as a, you know, as one of those kids who fell through the cracks. I saw them. You know, I remember going into a poetry class, and, you know, a whole poetry class, you know, for grade 11 poetry, just seeing this kid at the back with his thatch of hair and his, you know, doing this and like tapping his pencil and like, oh, when, when can I get out of here? When can I get out of here? The whole time. I was doing the class and then the bell rang and every other student who'd been sitting there listening to me cleared out of the classroom. He's the one who moseyed up from the back of the classroom and went, hey miss. I'm like, yeah, and he's like, can I have that poem, you know, the one about your grandmother? <laughs> he, was the, he was the one who connected with the poetry and yet he was the one who looked like he was the one who so didn't want to be there. And that, he's my Jake, you know, he's where Jake came from, you know, that sensitive inside human being that we can't always see because we're looking at what's on the outside and also you know what would it be like I wanted to know what would it be like to not be able to to read and write the way that I do it was really totally putting myself in somebody else's shoes I mean I've read when I was four it's my life it's how I stay sane <laughs> who knows I order I read I, then that makes sense of the world but what if you couldn't do that and what would it be like to be in a situation where you actually had to know I mean, he's given that diary of skies and he can't read it. And as a result, a series of choices are made. It's, um, that was an incredible journey to, 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 to go, so, to be, first of all, to be male and then to go inside somebody else's head. So I hoped, truthfully, Andrea, I can say, did I just want to write a book about Jake, an 18-year-old? Did I hope that one person in reading that book would, would care about a Jake? Yeah. Yeah, I care about that, you know, it's just so, and I don't know, do you remember that kid in class, like when I was a little girl, when the teacher would say, stand up and read, and the guy that would get up and read out loud, but he really couldn't read, and, and you would sit in your seat, and you go, why did you ask him to read? Why did you do that to the little David so-and-so in the back? Sorry, David, his name was David. There was always a kid who was, you know, couldn't do that, and just the embarrassment that you felt for them, right? I think that comes from that same place. You can just, uh, yeah. Or we can be done. Okay. We can be done. Sorry, I don't want to like end like crying about like Jake Upshore. That's just like, I do, it's still, did I care when I, when I wrote that book? Like to give one person, like give this to like, and you know what UMB did? They gave that book to their first year education students and said, read this book. One teacher gave like their whole, she's like, no, this is required reading if you're going to be teachers. Am I, do I, like, am I happy that that's being used as an educational tool? Damn shooting I am. You know, but it's not why I did it. Jake shouted to me, tell my story. But then you're thinking, use it. Yeah, use it. I don't have any problem with that. But I would hope that it wasn't like didactic, that it wasn't like Sherry trying to give a message to the world or something. No, it, it should, it, right? What they say, it should emerge from the story and the character. There should, they should, even if they go, hey, you know what? You know, I'll, I'll, you know, that might be what it's like. And they just think about it for a second. That's enough. That's enough. Yeah, it's funny. You don't know why you write sometimes. I still don't know why.